Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. And on my continuing series on making the move from Windows or Mac to Linux, today I'm going to be talking about some very useful commands and also some system tools that you can use to monitor what's going on and also at the same time to get rid of things that are causing problems on your system. Now before I go forward, if you have not seen my original video where I showed you how to install VirtualBox in your Windows machine or Mac and then show you how to install Linux Mint within the VirtualBox, be sure to check it out in the description below and that will show you how to do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into my virtual machine right here and I'm going to show you these very simple but useful commands and also tools. So let's go full screen. So if you are new to Linux, uh, specifically Linux Mint, um, you're going to have to relearn a lot of things that you were used to in Windows. Okay, I'm specifically talking on Windows. So one of the things that a lot of people are used to in Windows is the Control Alt Delete command. And what that allows you to do is bring up basically a task manager. Now in Linux Mint, there is not a default command for that. If you do press Control Alt Delete, normally it'll give you some options to shut down your system. So let me show you some actual tools that you can use right here in Linux Mint, which are very similar, but I think they're actually better. And the first one is actually the system monitor itself, which is basically the Linux version of the task manager. So if you go here to your menu, you'll find it right here. You click on system monitor. And this should be very familiar to you, but it's actually more fully featured than the one on Windows. So when the system monitor comes up, it's gonna show you all the current processes that are running. And then if you click on resources, it actually gives you more information. It shows you your actual CPC usage, also your memory usage, and everything that's going in and out of your network, i.e. your internet. So that's really cool. And finally, it actually shows you how much space is being used on your particular hard drive. So very, very useful tool. And some other things that you can do on this particular process is you could actually click on the process, say like Firefox, and you could end the process. So this is very similar to Windows when you know you have a program that's unresponsive and you would do control alt delete, you would find the programs that's causing the problem, you would end the process. In this case in Linux, um, it's called killing the process. So you can end it or kill it. And the difference between ending and killing, killing completely removes any processes related to this, okay? So sometimes when you just do N, it doesn't necessarily completely quote unquote kill the process itself. So now that you're familiar with the system monitor, let's uh, move on to some other programs that you might find useful. And this is primarily for people who want to know what's going on on their system. Okay. And like I said, the system monitor is the best one overall, but there's also some other ones that are built in. One of them is the Disk Usage Analyzer. So this is on my virtual box, so I really don't have anything on here. However, once you get things on here, it will give you a very detailed information on what's actually taking up your storage, how much, how many items. So it's a very, very nice and useful tool, especially if you are low on space and you're trying to figure out what's actually taking up all your space. And it's pretty detailed, but also very, very easy to look and see what's going on. And the final built-in tool that you might want to use, um, I don't use it that much at all, is the power statistics. And this is primarily for power management. So this would be more useful if you are on a laptop, like right here. It'll show you so the history and also statistics as well. So if you're a geek, you might really like this and even down to the processor level as well, okay? Now, there is another tool that you will use that is built in, and th this is just primarily for system information, but I'm gonna show you another one that actually works better. So it should be under preferences, and it's called System Info. And this is very similar to the Windows Info, 
uh, that you would go look at to see the version of your windows and so forth but it's very very basic um, I don't really like this tool that much because honestly it's just too basic for me okay but it gives you a really quick snapshot of what's actually on your system your hardware and also your operating system versions as well and your Linux kernel version however there's a tool that I like that's a lot better than this so if you go here to your menu you can go to your uh, preferences um, or actually it's under administration and then you could go to software manager and then uh, once you bring up your software manager you're gonna want to look up a tool called hard info okay and it doesn't really sound like a good name but it really is an awesome tool they should have called it system information that would have been a lot easier to look at but this one will give you really really detailed information about your hardware this is basically the equivalent of the very detailed uh, system info that you would get in Windows where you could see all your hardware devices so I'm gonna go ahead and install this I wish that this particular tool was actually um, installed by default because it is so much better than the default system info that you get okay so now we got the hard info system information tool installed and where you will find it now is you go to your menu go to administration and then you see a new program called system profiler and benchmark and this tool is really really detailed and it does more than just give you a summary so let me show you quickly what it does so right here you could obviously see a general summary but it's way more detailed than the default system information that I showed you earlier it's a lot more information here tells you versions of your operating system kernels there's so many things here as well and I'm not gonna go through all this but it's kind of self-explanatory and then um, this is very familiar to people who are on Windows where you could see all your various devices on here so very similar but I think this is way more detailed and it's much easier to navigate than the one in Windows in my opinion and then also one final thing that I really like about this tool is you can run benchmarks so here you could compare your actual computer uh, versus some other machines um, that they have put as standards to go by so I'm running this right now so it tells you what your particular computer is compared to other comparable ones and I'm not sure how often they update this but it's really cool that you have it here so you could kind of see where your machine is compared to others so they got a few benchmarks right here and also really another nice feature is it allows you to generate a report and you could choose the report for which type of uh, devices or actually which category that you want and when you generate it it gives you the option where you could generate it in HTML or text okay so I'm gonna just do text so then I don't have to open up a browser so we'll just save it right here under my home folder let's go ahead and save it and it might take a second because what it will do is it's actually also going to run all these uh, benchmarks okay now that's done so let's go to our home folder and here's the hard info report open it up and there it is you see everything here all nice and neat and even if you scroll down you should see the benchmarks that it ran on your system let's go down to the bottom and it's very detailed information you know I mean like if you really love looking at data then this is this is very useful data let's go down to the benchmarks yeah see here are the benchmarks down here you know labeled quite fittingly the benchmark section so and if you do produce the HTML report it just looks nicer but I just want to see the data you know it's a lot easier for me to do it in text so that is a very very important tool I think with the system monitor uh, that is the most important one and then this one is the second most important
but you've probably been using the system monitor uh, more than any of those other tools that I just showed you. So now, let's go ahead and get to this uh, control alt delete, okay? Um, because you wanna get to the system monitor, okay? That's really what that's, this is for that we're doing, you know? And some of the things that you could do to get to the system monitor quicker, see is you can actually put it on your, as your favorites. So if you go to system monitor, you right click, add it to your favorites, it'll show up on the left bar. So that's one way to get to the system monitor easier. Another way is creating a command, uh, just like the control alt delete command. So how you would do that is you would go to menu and you know, there's already a, a shortcut here for system settings. So I just click on that. And I'm gonna show you how to do two uh, basic commands um, that I think are very useful. One is the control alt delete command and there's another one to um, kill windows, okay? There are many other commands in Linux. Um, however, uh, I'm gonna not go into those. I'm just gonna go into these two because I feel like these are the ones that you're, a lot of people are gonna use on a regular basis, especially the task manager, uh, the control alt delete command. So all you would do is go to keyboards right here and what you would do is go to shortcuts. And if you notice, there are already some default shortcuts here. But what I wanna do is add some custom shortcuts. So what you do here is add custom shortcut. And you can name it whatever you want, but most people know this as a task monitor, okay? So I'll name it as such. And here's where it's important that you put the correct command. Okay, now we are in a GNOME environment, okay? That, that's the desktop environment for Linux Mint. So you would type in this command. Okay, so whenever we execute this command, which we're about to do, it will go ahead and execute GNOME system monitor, which is what that program is, the system monitor. Whenever you open it up, it executes this GNOME system monitor command. So we're at this. So now you'll see the shortcut right here, but right now it doesn't have any keys, shortcut keys related to this command yet. So what you do is you go down here to unassign, double click, and now put in a key combination that you want. In this case, it's control alt delete. And there you go, control alt L. So let's go ahead and test it out. We're gonna close this down. Okay, let's go ahead and con press control alt delete. And there it is, the system monitor came up. So this will make things a lot easier for you, especially if you are used to doing this in Windows. So if you need to look at your processes or kill something, that's definitely an easy way to do it, okay? So I'm gonna add one more command. So let's go ahead and shut that down. Let's go back to settings. And I'm gonna add the kill command. Now, as I stated a little bit earlier, when you do the kill command, it, it does exactly what it is. It absolutely kills whatever uh, program is running. So this is for instances where you have a program that is just not responsive. And in Linux, things are really stable, um, especially in Linux Mint. So it's not often that you have a program that actually freezes like it normally does in Windows. But there are those situations where you might need to kill a program that's unresponsive. So we'll do the same thing. We'll add a sh custom shortcut. I'm gonna call this kill windows. You can name it whatever you want, but this is easier for me to remember. And the command you wanna put is X kill. So we'll go ahead and add that. And just like the task monitor, you'll go ahead and add your uh, key combination. So we'll go here, double click on it. And now you go ahead and add your command. I'm gonna do control K. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this and let's test it out. So say uh, this program was unresponsive. What you do is press control K. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get this X. And this X, whatever you put it over and click, it will absolutely kill this entire process. So we'll click on that and it's gone. So, um, and like I stated earlier, that's different than you just closing the window. This actually kills that whole process underneath. And let me explain to you in general, like how that works um, and not to get into too much detail, 
But whenever you open up your system monitor and you're looking at your processes, each process has a unique ID. Okay, and so whenever you send a kill process, it will actually look for this particular ID and it will kill it. Okay, so if I killed this one, it would uh, send a command and it will kill this particular uh, program. You know, now this is uh, xkill is not something that you want to do on a regular basis. Um, like it even warns you, you know, it's better if you actually end the process. But um, for those situations where it is just completely unresponsive and you can't do anything, then uh, that's what xkill is for. There are other kill commands, but those are the two uh, main commands that I would put in uh, because that's something that you're going to use regularly specifically the control alt delete command so then you could get to your system monitor so that's basically it for this particular episode um, it's very simple very useful commands and very useful tools that you can use to not only monitor your computer and actually get more information on it but also to create some very useful shortcuts so if you have any thoughts on these commands or any others that you find useful be sure to leave it in the comments area below and if you did find value in these videos be sure to leave a like and subscribe thanks for watching thanks for checking out this episode and as always if you like these videos be sure to click on the subscribe button and for full written content audio content and additional geek stuff head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.